Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Brief. Once again, the United Nations is preparing to weigh in on multiple resolutions against Israel put forth by the Palestinian Authority. And amongst them is one resolution in support of the Palestinians' right of return. But in stark contrast to the typical, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations is today announcing plans to advance a resolution recognizing Jewish refugees from Arab countries. Nearly 800,000 Jews are estimated to have fled Arab countries in the last century due to pogroms and other discriminatory government policies. And speaking to the UN, Ambassador Dani Danone explains that the international community, like so often, is comfortable focusing only on the Palestinian refugees while, quote, erasing the story of hundreds of thousands of Jews from the history pages. But Israel will voice the truth and correct this historical injustice, he adds. Now, does Dani expect this resolution to actually be adopted? Probably not. But either way, it does speak to a larger supposed hypocrisy at work at the United Nations. Namely, that Jewish refugees have since settled in Israel and elsewhere, but have never been recognized as peoples forced from their homelands, meaning their migration is essentially looked at as voluntary. Meanwhile, the estimated 750,000 Palestinian refugees from 1948 mostly left Israeli cities at the behest of invading Arab countries. Yet decades after their resettlement in Syria, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and elsewhere, they, their children, and their grandchildren all enjoy refugee status while demanding to return to the lands they abandoned. A university student in Canada is now being forced to resign from her student government position because she's going on a visit to Israel. The Canadian Jewish Advocacy Group is now instead coming down in the Legislative Council at McGill University in Montreal, though, after they took a vote asking Jordan Wright to remove herself from the committee over her planned participation in the trip. The trip in question is called Face to Face, and it's organized by the Hillel of Montreal, and the visit brings students to meet with both journalists, politicians, and locals from both Israel and Palestinian territories to better understand the nuanced conflict. But only Jordan was singled out for going. Wright says that other students who were going to join the trip who are not Jewish were not addressed, let alone asked to step down. But still, the committee says that Wright must either pull out of the trip or resign. Wright, on the other hand, has vowed to resist the measure, and she went on to say that this is not the first time Jewish students were bullied out of student government at McGill. In 2017, a Jewish student was removed from the university's student government for his mere involvement in Jewish life on campus. But that same year, a student and representative also on the board named Igor Sadikov called for violence on campus when he tweeted out, Punch a Zionist today. And when a motion was brought forward to remove Sadikov from his representative seat following the incitement and several other racist comments, students voted to keep him on board in a 5-4 to four decision. It's not yet clear how McGill will respond to this latest student council action. Currently, Israel has a major problem with plastic. Citizens of the Jewish state are estimated to spend roughly $57 million on single-use plastics annually, and the results have been dramatic, from the landfills to the streets and, of course, to the beaches. In fact, Israeli schools in Jerusalem alone are responsible for using nearly 30 million disposable plastic products every year, according to Globes. But thankfully, things are starting to change. Images of Greta Thunberg are being printed and posted in workplaces to encourage waste reduction. Individuals across the country are banding together to protest the country's dependence. And now, the Jerusalem municipality is additionally taking action. With some 7 to 8 million shekels in funding, the capital is now preparing to set up a plastic-free environment in Jerusalem schools, starting with the kindergartens and community centers. Mayor Moshe Lyon revealed the decision following the success of a six-month pilot, and the plan is to simply replace disposable plasticware with reusable and washable dishware. Also, each school will adopt a plan that fits best for them, whether it's a dishwasher, hand washing, or even sending dirty dishes home to be washed by parents. Hundreds of kindergartens in the ultra-Orthodox and Arab-Israeli communities will not make the switch just yet, though, citing logistical issues. And most likely, this is due to dietary and kosher restrictions that make the change a bit more complicated. That said, the national non-religious kindergartens also follow such rules, and no explanation for the discrepancy has yet been given. New Mosaic Findings in Israel's North is now opening the door to a long-lost thriving community of Jews that little is known about. When the Second Temple fell in the first century, Jews scattered out of Jerusalem as Romans invaded and brought down the city's walls. Some hid out in the desert, and many fled the region altogether. But with new rainbow ceramic tiles, a Jewish community that seems to have survived and thrived during these times has now been located in the ancient town of Majulia, and it's changing what anthropologists previously thought. Not only did Jews live in the city, but they put a lot of effort into decorating their public spaces. Excavation director Dr. Michael Osban said that 
findings show a turn in synagogue usage. Jews used to use synagogues as study halls, but the ruins lead these excavators to believe that the buildings became prayer halls at this point in time. And the mosaics don't show any pictures in full, just limbs of animals can be made out. But researchers believe that the mosaics may have been intentionally dismantled. Archaeologists say that while synagogues used to be unadorned, this time period saw the addition of mosaic tiles and colors to prayer houses, inviting community members to be a part of the synagogue and treated as a community gathering space. Excavations from this area also gained media attention when Osban discovered a Roman period synagogue that was abandoned around 350 CE, and it looks similar to modern synagogues in this Golan area and throughout Israel today. Osband also uncovered remnants of a potter's kiln, considered the first of the era to be found, along with olive presses. And while other archaeologists might not have put the time or effort into uncovering this small bit of mosaic, Osband said it's only the patience of masters like himself and his team that could bring these few pictures of historic Jewish life to the public. That's all for now, but for more news from Israel, remember to like ILTV on Facebook and on Instagram, and to subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.